Hello and welcome to Nova Anime Law and Theory video and today I will take a closer look at how Einzulgon would conquer our own human world after he's done with his new world and why it would be fairly easy and fairly difficult at the very same time. But before we are going to take a closer look at any of this, let me quickly thank my Patreons for supporting this channel and say my thanks to all users of the YouTube thanks function for making one-time donations. And with that said, let's dive into the topic at hand. First and foremost, it is essential to mention the deplorable state in which our own world finds itself in the year 2138. The air is so polluted and toxic that even people in their 30s need new artificial lungs simply because the normal human respiratory organs can no longer function in this world at that point. Even while constantly wearing a gas mask while being outside. This is also the reason why we see air filters in Ein's Orgon's apartment, because the outside air is probably closer to planets like Venus than our own, formerly blue planet. Moreover, the ground and the oceans are so polluted and poisoned that nothing can survive there, no plants, no animals, nothing except, perhaps, maybe, the hardiest of bacteria. Even the rain is oily, and extremely contaminated. This means that any invasion army from Einzulgon's world, or rather his current world, would face extreme challenges simply because the environment is a catastrophe to the point where even super tier magic like creation, which is specifically designed to alter the landscape and change things like lava or other dangerous environments to a more suitable area of as very, very limited protection and help here. Of as very limited help and protection here. So Einzulgon would likely rely on only the extremely resilient NPCs, such as his undead warriors, as well as give out plenty of protective items to his living NPCs to avoid constant losses due to the environmental conditions in this new old world. Another question that might arise by this point is, how exactly Eins enters the old world? Probably by using the Wish spell, which could be used to cast an extraordinarily powerful gate spell to bring troops to and from the new world. Alternatively, the world item that Aureal Omega used to carry, which shan't your blood fallen, is now wielding as protection from the effects of other world class items, such as downfall of castle and country, could be potentially used to create a permanent portal, a connection between the Great Tomb of Nazarick and the Old World. And since Aureol Omega is responsible for the teleportation network in Nazarick, her world item likely has something to do with teleportation magic in general. This would establish a permanent connection between the two worlds, also necessitating isolation measures to prevent the toxic gases from infiltrating and contaminating the entirety of the new world. So again, while some items can counteract things like poison or environmental pollution, eins would be able to bring only a few living beings to the old world as well as basically any unliving thing he wants. Yuri Alpha would be a suitable candidate because she is an undead, a Dullahan to be more precise, as well as Sheldir Bloodfallen, and perhaps Pandora's actor in his transformation as Eins Ulgon. Gargantua might also work purely due to the fact that he is a golem, but he is quite big, and he would probably get too much attention, at least in the first phase. Albedo, armed with many protective items and possibly a gas mask, would also accompany Eins. And furthermore, I believe that this invasion will start in Japan, since he speaks the local language there. And this toxic landscape also has the advantage that there will be few civilians or other individuals near the outpost that Eins will likely establish in very remote regions of the country. Once an operative base is set up, 
Pandor's actor will begin to infiltrate the government circles. Although he can't transform into other people as assuming their abilities and skills without sacrificing one of his transformation slots, he still can imitate their looks perfectly without any further costs. And given that Pandora's actor is probably stronger than any being in the old world, this combination is even more effective. Meanwhile, Albedo and her team will familiarize themselves with the psychological conditions of the old world and study governments and societies to identify their weaknesses. Albedo is already responsible for the coordination of the bureaucracy and the undead administrative apparatus in the Sorcerer Kingdom as its Prime Minister, so she knows exactly how to work with the undead elder liches. In the meantime, Eins will implement his own strategy, as sooner or later, thanks to the modern scanning technology and surveillance satellite, the numerous undead lurking in the thick fog of the old world will become somewhat noticeable. Therefore, at some point, a new and genuinely intriguing company will be founded. And this business will bring to you an undead amusement park and closed in a massive glass dome with clean air, plants, animals and everything else that can be brought in the new world or rather to Japan from the new world. And that will be depicted as highly advanced and stylized robots and the undead appearance will be established as a marketing gag. You know, let somebody else work themselves to death and such happy end. <laughs> yeah enticing slogans will make all of this palatable. Of course, company policy dictates that only the most skilled and Nazarick Inc. certified specialists will get to see the interiors of these rather special androids. And thanks to the benevolent government grants from the now let's call him changed prime minister or whoever will be in charge of Japan at this time who then will have a sudden change of heart. The project and the company will be celebrated and this undead amusement park and its specific way of doing business and promoting undead or rather unalive workers will not be questioned. On the contrary, the androids and robots that are seen as something that can provide cheap labor to other companies. This will be an exciting new product made in Japan that will gain worldwide attention and be promoted by a cute android mate, leading to every single other company and country importing them in masses. And the CEOs of the other major companies and trusts that have long seized actual power in the old world will gradually come to fancy and admire this new company without trying to co-opt it, or to strong arm it, or to crush it on its way to the top. And the behavior of these highly important businessmen will change somewhat unnaturally. Some no longer remember friends or family and are only interested in buying these robots and putting them to work. Others seem transformed, while very few and very stupid people have apparently simply gone insane claiming in a state of panic to have seen ghosts, haunted spirits, skeletons and an undead overlord ready to take over the world and other such stupid supernatural things. It's all quite crazy, isn't it? Well, that's just stress-induced hallucination. I'm sure. I mean, <laughs> what else would it be? Well, life at the top takes its toll, especially when all of the kidnapped and replaced corporate leaders, politicians and officials stand before Ein Sulgon and have to explain why they've allowed the old world to deteriorate into such a deplorable, messy state. Meanwhile, the governments and corporations of Earth would have a strange harmony among them, old enemies becoming friends and companies no longer seem to compete but rather to help each other as if they were all being influenced by some source behind the scene. 
Meanwhile, new administration bots, humorously referred to by people in the media and by commentators as elderliches, would work in many government offices. It's almost as if somebody hidden was secretly seizing power by placing his troops and leaders within every single level of society. At the same time, behind the scenes, Alberto's elderliches and doppelgangers would coordinate all of this, overseeing all of the corporate leaders who have been placed under the mental control of Nazarek or have been downright replaced. Since Eins has straightened out their minds and they begin to unify the planet, supported by a vast army of undead, or rather, robots and androids, which of course is again just an intriguing marketing strategy. You can't kill our soldiers because they are already dead. <laughs> It's funny, isn't it? Meanwhile, huge atmospheric processors would be built and operated over centuries in many, many nations to restore the atmosphere to its natural state, while Eins quietly seizes global control without firing a single shot. And that's basically how I think that Einzelgon would conquer the world, although we humans possess massive military power and even atomic weapons, we have no defense against mind control and the doppelganger of Nazarek. Thus, there wouldn't be a spectacular war where Eins has to teleport away from hundreds of nuclear bombs while leading an undead horde of skeletons that only break through the defensive lines of humankind when the humans ran out of ammunition. It would be a silent takeover, unnoticed, until Eins eventually reveals his hand and his face and compels them to applaud his supreme power. In the end, it would be quite a shock for the one who now has to clear out what used to be Einzelgon's former apartment, but from which the now skeletalized human body of Eins is now being evicted after the bills hadn't been paid in month, because his account finally ran out of money. And for the guy cleaning up his room, it would be business as usual, just another lone soul who has passed away unnoticed for God knows how many years. Then, as if out of nowhere, a tall uniformed man stands behind the guy asking what he plans to do with his father's bones. A rather shilling thought. And that's pretty much how Einzelgorn would conquer the world, at least in my opinion. But what is yours? Let me know down in the comment section. And while you type, Let me say thank you very much for watching dash, and dash, special dash. thanks to Arda Daddy Arda, ASK, Bad Guy Ye, Bad Burrito 316, Beza, Ben C, Brandon D, Chrissy, Crowley 0221, Sia, Crystal Prime, Dead Slime, Death is Mercy, Deathless Dragonlord, Demon Xenomorph 1987, Devin Downen, Ding Dong, Dragonlord, Placido Saxophone, Duckwagon, Dunkler Krieger, Dystopia, Dystopia the Second, Enigmatic Unicorn, Feral Shivan, Guy with That Hat, Hector Marino, Hoss, Huster, Jacob G, Jana B, Jason, J. Morris, Chromius, Kyle R, Lee K. Long, Legendarius, Lelouch Ribetania with a mustache, Lexus Fox, Lord Nishikian Rai, Lord Touch Me, Love Razor, Merovec, Mr. Shoes, Mr. Tweaker, Michael R, Michael Y, Nope, Oh Hell No, Normal Toad, O'Kill, Overlord General Gasper, Paddy Pentum, Personage, Primus 11, Rhinomir, QNA Karakos P, Shergox's Daddy, Shadow Lightning Wolf, Shrine Keeper, Super Tier Magic Batista Bomb, Supreme Cheese, Staris, Ted, Texas Deer, The Orc Warboss, Rocket Smasher, T.E. Wang, The Shark Guy, 
Vegito27, Venture Fanatic, Wilhelm, Zenokai, and Zonagon. Thanks, guys. Anyway, have a nice day, and I hope to see you all again soon under my next video.